This video is going to be a quick demo of the modular texture pack. The video is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be in Blender and the second part is going to be in Modo. And that's because the modular texture pack is not app specific. It can be used in any 3D or even any 2D app. So you can use it in Blender, in Modo, in Maya, in Cinema 4D, in Photoshop or Substance Painter, Substance Designer, Quixel, wherever you want. However, the Modo version does have a bit of extra convenience thanks to Modo's preset browser, but more on that later. For now, we're going to take a look at how it would work in Blender. So I've got this scene open in Blender and I've got this coffee pot and it's got very basic materials on it at the moment. And I want to show you how by using the modular texture pack, I can quickly add a brush metal feel to the steel on this pot. So I've got the object selected and I've switched to the material tab and I've selected the chrome material supplied here. Now obviously at the moment it's not metallic so let's quickly create a metallic material. I'm going to set the base color to sort of a lightish gray something like that and then I'm just going to increase the metallic value all the way to one and just for now I'm going to increase the roughness a little bit but we're going to be changing that with a map anyway. And now I want to create a brushed metal feel. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a map to the roughness channel of this material. So I'll select the main material node and I'm going to hit Control T to add a texture. So that's going to by default add it to the base color slot and that's not what I want. So I'm just going to disconnect that for now. And with the image texture node selected, I'm going to click on open and I'm going to make sure that I navigate to the correct folder. Now I've saved the relevant folder in my favorites so I can just get to it with one click and I'm going to select the anisotropic2.png and then just pull that in. Now, before I actually plug this into the roughness parameter of the material, I'm going to add a couple of extra nodes, and that's just going to give me a little bit more control over how the map is applied. So I'm going to go to add, and I click on search, and I'm going to search for value, and let's pull a value node in here. I'm going to set the value to 0.4. Then I'll go back to add, and I'm going to search again, and this time I'm going to search for mix, and I'm going to add a mix RGB node just here. And I'll just give myself a bit more room. So let's just shuffle everything around. Next, I'll connect the color output of my texture to the color one input of the mix node. And then let's connect the value to color two. I'll change the blending mode from mix to add. And then I'll take the color output of the mix RGB node and connect that to the roughness input of my material. And you can see the results appear immediately in Eevee. And the nice thing about using this mix node is I can control the strength of this brush metal texture with this slider. And if I want to see the results in higher quality, I can simply run cycles. And once again, I'm just going to adjust this slider in order to make the brushed metal texture a little bit more obvious. So you can see that with the textures that are included with the modular texture pack, I was able to create this tricky material really, really quickly. And with the Blender demo now complete, I've switched into Modo, where as I mentioned earlier, there's a little bit of extra convenience baked in thanks to Modo's kit system and its preset browser. But even if you're not a Modo user, you should still watch this section of the video because it will show you how you can use the textures in the modular texture pack to add some really nice subtle detail to your materials. So I'm going to open a preview render so we can take a look at the scene. And I already have some basic materials applied. These all come from VizPack products, which is available both for Blender and for Modo. But I'd like these materials to be a little bit dirtier, a little bit more worn and a little bit more lived in. So I'm going to head over to the Kits button and I'm going to open the Kits popover. And I'm going to look for this icon, which represents a stack of textures. Let's click on that to open the modular texture pack. And I'm going to pin that and I'll dismiss the Kits popover. So from this preset browser, there's two ways that you can access the actual textures. At the top level, I've created some presets with the maps already set to the correct effects, such as roughness or bump. And also these have nice icons that are going to give you a decent idea of what will happen once you've applied presets into your materials. However, you can also get to the actual texture maps directly if you expand the top level 
and just go into the images folder you'll see that all the raw images are there as well and just be aware there's actually more raw images than there are presets the presets are really there just to make the kit more convenient and quicker to use so what I'd like to do now is to add a smeary smudgy texture to my glass so I'm just going to make the thumbnail size a bit bigger and let's just scroll down and if I keep going, I should come to a section of smear textures. So I'm just going to grab smears one. Let me just expand my glass material. And I'm going to grab this preset and just drop it directly into glass material. And then I'll dismiss the popover. Now, if I select the texture, you can see that it's already set to roughness with the blend mode set to additive. And that means that whatever roughness is applied to this material will be added to the existing roughness in the material. Now, of course, this is a transparent material. So as well as reflection roughness, I'm also going to need some refraction roughness. But let's just unpause preview and take a look. And you can see that straight away this map is adding some variation in the glossiness of the glass, which is really helping to make it look more realistic. I'm just going to right click on the texture in the shader tree and I'm going to create an instance of it. And I'm going to set the effect of this instance to basic channels, refraction roughness. Now by default, the effect is way too strong. That's because the opacity is set to 100%. I'm going to make it much more subtle. Let's try setting it 2%. Then I'll select the original flexion roughness material and I'm going to reduce its opacity to 50% to once again just make it a little bit more subtle. And that, as you can see, is only adding a tiny bit of variation to the roughness of the glass. But this result, as subtle as it is, is much, much better to the ultra clean result we were getting without the maps. I'm just going to disable them to show you the difference. You can see that with the maps disabled, the glass just doesn't look as realistic because the reflections and refractions are just too uniform. But with these two maps enabled, the results are much more believable. Next, I'm going to break up the reflections on this steel coffee pot. You can see this already has a pretty nice material added to it that comes from Bispack products. But I'd like to have just a little bit more variation, just a slightly more dirty and worn look. So I'm going to head over to the kits once again. Let's click on the modular texture pack and let's drag preset browser over to pin it. And I'm just going to scroll down to look at the dirt textures. And dirt one looks like it could be interesting. So I'm just going to expand the chrome material and let's drag and drop this material at the top of that section, dismiss the popover. Once again, if I select the material itself, you can see it's already set to roughness with an additive blending mode. So let's unpause preview and just take a look at the results. Now that looks okay. I can see the smeary dirty pattern here, but it's overpowering the brush metal look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the opacity of this map to just 25% so that it blends in better with the existing roughness maps on the brush metal material. And I think that looks much better. You can see the brush metal material and the dirt map sort of interacting together. So next, I'm going to add some texturing to this plastic tray. So once again, I'll go to the kits button and I'm going to open my modular texture pack. I'm going to scroll down and take a look at the various dirt options. And I quite like the look of this dirt six. So I'm just going to expand the tray material and I'm going to drag and drop the dirt six material at the top of that group. Then I think I'd also like to add some micro scratches to the plastic material. So I'm just going to scroll down until I find the scratch materials and I'm going to locate scratches to roughness and I'm going to add that to the top of the tray group. And with that done, I'm going to dismiss the popover. Now I want these two maps to be really, really subtle. I want them to be barely perceptible. So I'm going to select the dirt map and I'm going to go to the texture layers and I'm going to reduce its opacity all the way down to just 15%. Next, I'm going to select the scratches map and I'm going to reduce its opacity down to 25%. With that done, I'm going to unpause preview and we can take a look at the results. So now that previews had a chance to cook for a while, you can see the maps are there. They're barely perceptible, but they're there. And that's exactly the kind of effect that I'm looking for here. I don't want it to be obvious. I want it to be barely noticeable, but it's just enough to give a realistic and tactile feeling to the material without the map 
the material just feels too bare, too simple. But with this just very subtle layer of wear and tear, it suddenly starts looking much more realistic. So as you can see, the modular texture pack makes it really easy to add these kinds of subtle details to your shading very, very quickly. In no time at all, I've completely transformed the glass and the plastic tray, and I've also improved the existing material on the coffee pot. And in the past, I've spent countless hours trying to create these kind of subtle textures to create these tactile materials. And so having this texture library on hand really speeds up my workflow, and I hope it can also speed up yours.